guess we are live. Hello. Yes, looks like we're live. Okay, this is weird. Um, good thing is, I think we have nobody watching, so that's great. Just gonna be me talking to myself. Um, yeah, so this stream, I call this stream, what did I call it? An idiot explains Bezier curves because, hello, I'm the idiot. And we're gonna be talking about Bezier curves. Um, a, f a while ago, I tried to figure out how to align um, Bezier surfaces to other Bezier surfaces. Kind of what you do in Alias. So, um, So basically, let's say we have a busy surface here. So this is our surface. Um, and then we have another surface um, somewhere here, I guess. So those the surfaces, sometimes you want them to transition into each other. And um, it's very useful if the transition is smooth. So you can now align in alias this edge to this edge of that surface. So um, and here if we just go to G1, this means tangent, which is relatively easy to understand. It's just, just means that those points of the surface we align are um, basically um, on a straight line over this point where they connect to the other surface. So this is tangent and this gives you kind of a smooth transition, but not really. If you look at the highlights, you can see there's like a little break. Um, but overall, this is in a lot of engineering software, this is enough. Um, but then in automotive, we usually want G2, um, which means curvature alignment which includes the second row of CVs or the second hull or um, the third row if this is the first, second, third. And this, this row of CVs is going to be influenced by that row of CVs here. So if I move this up or down, you see those CVs move. Those CVs, they stay where they are because they are still uh, tangent aligned over here. So, um, yeah. The reason I wanted to figure this out in um, Grasshopper is, on the one hand, I want to do something like this um, with Grasshopper algorithm surfaces or like a mesh of some sort. Um, and the issue is that in grasshopper the tools are very limited you don't really have something like this align tool that we have in alias um, and I I mean surprise surprise I wasn't able to figure it out um, first of all I don't have any idea about math so that's why idiot um, and also it's mm, relatively complex to construct so yeah I didn't quite get there I mean I kind of got there but um, I needed a lot of workarounds so one of those workarounds was because I actually figured something out um, figured out how curves are aligned to each other so um, if we have those two curves here um, then we can also align this curve to that curve and now this does the same thing and um, now those two curves they are smoothly aligned to each other um, which is great and it's relatively easy to figure out how tangent works. You just need to kind of look at this point and then on a straight line through this endpoint, somewhere there needs to be the tangent point of the next line or the next curve. Um, and that works quite easily. But you can already tell when I move this point around, this point kind of goes somewhere. And um, apparently, or obviously, it's connected to this point, but how exactly? Um, I have no idea or I had no idea still mathematically I don't understand how how to do this I mean I kind of get this book here 
Um, it's a big book with like lots of math and formulas and stuff, but um, I couldn't even get through the introduction because I just have no idea about calculus and stuff like this, which I don't know how important it is, but matrix calculation, all this, all this stuff. I mean, I, I kind of understand that it is used, but I have no idea how. So, okay. I think this is enough introduction. Um, oh yeah, um, actually this is part one. So we're not going to be doing this today. So today I just want to kind of focus on how a Bezier curve is kind of calculated at all. Or again, not calculated. I'm not going to be calculating anything. Um, but I will kind of explain how it's constructed under the hood. Um, and let's just jump over to grasshopper for this. Um, yeah. So let's just drop in a couple of points. Or let's just really just start with two points. Um, so two points and the Bezier curve that only connects two points, which is a line. Um, but this would also be um, basically a degree one Bezier curve. So now let's just grab those two points and bring them into grasshopper, set multiple points. Um, and then I really like to internalize my data. So then I can just delete the original points and now I only have grasshopper points. Um, and the advantage is I can now just save my grasshopper file. Um, don't have to worry about the Rhino file because there is no geometry that relates to my grasshopper file. Everything is contained in grasshopper. So I really like internalizing data. I basically always do this. And then if I want to have it back in Rhino for some reason, I can always bake it and, um, and reassign it. So. Um, those are points, so let's make them yellow, just for me to remember what, what it is. So, here we go. Um, okay, so we have those points, and now we can connect um, those two points with a line. Mm, let's just use the polyline if we just have two points, we plug this in. So now we have a straight connection. And um, basically what, um, how, mm, how this degree one Bezier curve or um, what is it called? Um, a linear Bezier curve basically um, is a linear interpolation. So you have this point and that point and then you just linearly interpolate in between those two. I think there's even math, there is here this linear interpolate tool, which kind of, um, let's say, parameter, okay, let's make a number slider, plug this in here, and now we should be able to linearly interpolate, so let's get rid of this real quick. So now we just linearly interpolate between those two points, and if we um, get a, oh not this one, let's get a range. Um, so this is also from 0 to 1 and now I think this will generate, oops, excuse me, goes in here. This will generate now 10 points if we put a number slider here with 100 then we have 100 points in between. So yeah, we can again use the poly, where is it? line um, and this will now go from one point to the next point to the next point to the next point but in the end it's just a straight connection so we don't for a linear interpolation we don't need any of this we just get the straight curve or the straight um, line and get rid of this linear thing I mean we like mm, in programming language you would actually use a in linear interpolation but Grasshopper has, yeah, Grasshopper is not really loop based. It's all like list based when it comes to how it manages data under the hood or not just under the hood, but just right here on the interface. Um, so it's a little bit tricky to work with 
with just those data points, it's much easier to work with lines and break them up. But um, so this is how, uh, what we're gonna gonna do. So two points, we just have a line, and this is our Bezier one curve. So here we go. Um, let's kind of group this together and have this as well, maybe we. No, I think this is good enough. So this is busy one. So or um, yeah, busy linear busy curve. So the next one would be um, would be a square busy curve, I guess. Yes, I think so. So um, let's just delete those points, clear values. Oh, we can actually make this here invisible. Um, and we get three points. One, two, three. Um, grab them and set multiple points here. Internalize the data again. Get rid of the grasshopper points. No, we have those points. So um, we can again just get this linear. Um, that's a polyline tool. And this will connect those three points like this. So now if we again do a linear interpolation which would be something like this, you see the t value, this is basically um, always from 0 to 1. Actually we have to normalize this. I would always recommend you normalize your, your curves um, because then that means that the value is really from 0 to 1, um, which means now if we go from 0 to 1, we go like from one end of the line to the other end of the line. But in this case, we don't want this. So we want to break those two lines up, um, which we can do in Grasshopper by evaluating... No, not derivatives. Oh, maybe this could be... Hmm. We want to um, evaluate curvature. No, discontinuity. Um, so this curve... And then here again, we um, re-parameterize the curve, so it's from 0 to 1. And now we get a t-value here, so those points, they have um, they have certain t-values, those three points. And um, now with the scatter tool, and now again, re-parameterize, or I mean, if, if you don't re parameterize those two curves this would also work but I I just think it's good practice to do this so then we connect the curve or the line here again and connect us here and now as an output we have two line like curves so line like curve zero line like curve one so that's great um, let's make this all invisible just disconnect this or like that. Um, so let's color code this. I just always like to color code everything. Um, it's easier, especially when you zoom out to kind of understand what's actually going on. Um, but it's very, very personal thing that <laughs> I think I'm the only one doing that. Okay, here we kind of get points, I would say. So let's make this yellow for points. Um, and then pack this together because this is basically what we want. We want to connect fr a line from one curve, uh, from one point to the next point to the next point. This is what we get out of here. So let's make this all red. So this whole thing is our um, linear connection tool, basically. So now we can linearly interpolate between those curves or those lines and now we end up with two points so we basically have one linear Bezier curve here one linear Bezier curve there and we interpolate linearly between those two um, and what we can do now is we can actually connect those two points so we just use this again copy it Let's make this yellow. Here we go. 
So now we have another curve or another line here. And if we now in linearly interpolate between those two points basically, and we do this the same amount as we do here, then we end up with a point, the yellow point that is kind of bouncing from one end, it goes in between, ends up on the other side. So if we just hide this, hide that, and now if you follow this point here, then it kind of gives us a curve. Um, oh, let's get rid of this. Oh, what do we do? Let's get here we go. Yes. Ah. So it's kind of. like a two degree curve in alias. Um, actually, we can use those steps here, um, here and here, and we have to graft it. I guess you can see now it's, mm, here we get linear interpolations and linear interpolations. And then if we connect those, then we get those lines. And here you can already tell that this kind of describes our Bezier curve. And if we turn on those points here, then we see, yeah, this is our Bezier curve in between those linear Bezier curves. We have now our quadratic Bezier curve. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. Um, let's do it like that. Let's put this over here. Mm, kind of want to make this brown for math or any kind of numbers. Uh, I like to have them in brown. Um, so, and also this. So now if we use this tool again, um, oops. let's just copy this over. Now we can connect all those points. Um, actually we have to flatten it because they're all in an individual branch right now. Um, and then we end up with our Bezier curve here. And uh, if we move those points around, you can see, yeah, it behaves exactly like a busy curve should, because this is basically what a busy curve is. Um, so, okay. Now, this is a quadratic busy curve. We can just, um, maybe we can, we can group this together. No, let's, um, actually, let's group this together. This yellow, this is one part. And then this, here I'm just using this um, mm, this linear interpolate or the, the uh, polyline curve, sorry, the polyline. And um, but I could also use the whole shebang here, even so we only have one curve. But um, let's just do this. Let's delete this and just copy that. Move this out of the way. So connect this connect that and connect this again and here we go so now if we want to do um, a curve with four points or three degrees or um, a cubic Bezier curve I guess um, let's just group this all up and actually copy and paste this and I guess we can get rid of that um, so now, okay, we hide all this stuff, um, and actually let's clear the values here and bring in four points, one, two, three, four, um, and get them in here, um, set multiple points, oh, maybe we should select them first, um, set multiple points. Um, 
what's going on. Oh. Okay. Yes. No. Set multiple points. Finally. Okay. Something is happening. Um. But this. Yeah. Kind of looks all right. But um. I don't think this is exactly what we're after. So let's just delete this. So um. Now we basically start again with linear interpolation. Oh. Actually, let's do this. Internalize the data and get rid of those CVs. So we do the same thing again. We um, interpolate in between those points. Um, end up basically basically with a handful of points here. Let's reduce this a little bit, make it uh, more visible. Um, then we connect those points again um, and end up with points on those points. Um, but now we have to basically just do this one more time. So it's always linear interpolations, then connecting those points, linear interpolations again, connecting those points again. Then we do a linear interpolation again and let's Okay, let's hide this and increase the number of CVs, uh, or basically the number of divisions. And now you can see we have a cubic Bezier curve and we can now connect them up again. So, make this visible. Um, and yeah, now we have a cubic Bezier curve and the same would work for, um, I don't know, what's, what's the next, like for five points or six, seven, eight. And basically what we need to do is we always need to copy this in Grasshopper, which doesn't make much sense, but unfortunately Grasshopper isn't loop-based, so you can you can see this would be a loop. And so we, we loop this, do this again, do this again. Grasshopper doesn't really do this natively, but there is a plugin called Anamone, and we can do that here. So I'm using the fast um, version of this. So there's like a classic and a fast. Um, and fast just means it runs continuously. Uh, we don't have to trigger it. It will just run. So basically we connect this one backwards. But I think you can also connect it this way. It doesn't matter. Um, but what matters is that here the data flows backwards. So in Grasshopper everything flows that that way, um, that 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 way from left to right, and here it flows from right to left. So we can actually loop stuff. Um, here um, on iterations, we tell it how many times we will loop it. Um, let's just put a number slider here and set it to zero. So for now, we don't loop anything, and then we just take those points. I guess we can just. Let's get a container. Here we go. Plug this point in here. Um, make this yellow. And then um, we basically want to copy all this and put this in between the loop. Oops. Did we do? Ah, yeah. Not that. I want to copy this. And then um, the data runs in he in here, out here. So this is where we get it. And then the point goes into here, and then basically gets fed back feedback. It will feed back into this device, and then run again. As long as we have the iteration set to something, if we have it set to zero, then it won't do that. So it will just basically give out all those points on the other end. Let's hide all this. So here we go. This is our output now. Um, now if we increase the iterations, one, um, something is happening. So then we increase it one more time. And now here we go. Um, it's basically doing the um, cubic interpolation again. So now we kind of want to don't want to change those iterations. We want to base this on the amount of points that we get here. So um, here we start with four points. So um, I guess we can just 
Mm, I get it. Let's get a list length. Um, to which basically counts the the amount of items in in a list. Oh, also if like you don't know what I mean when I talk about lists and data and all this stuff there. Um, it doesn't really matter. Like if you're if you're just watching this because you're curious how busy curves work and how um, an align tool would work. Um, all those data management things that are not really that important to understand how they work. Um, but if you want to know more about it, there is a lot of tutorials on, on YouTube. Maybe I will link um, one in the description below after the live stream is over. Um, okay. What was it doing? Oh yeah, exactly. So here we have four items, but um, we only want two iterations or three iterations, but um, um, the first iteration is basically zero, one, two. So we want to feed into here the number two. So um, here we get out the number four. If we plug this in, here we see, okay, this is a four. So if we plug this, if we plug the four in, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work. It runs too many times, so there's no there are no points in the end coming out of it. I think this will just be an empty no whatever list. Yeah, exactly. It's all empty. You have the branches here, but it's empty. So um, we could basically just subtract two like this. We have a minus um, and then two and plug this in. So that would work, but we can also um, make this a little bit simpler and just put an expression in here. So that would be X for the input minus two commit. Here we go. So now whatever um, or how many points ever we plug into this, it will always generate a busy curve for us, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, this is a number here, so I guess this would always um, also be brown. Um, let me just organize this real quick a little bit and let's just um, give the loop this color. So then we group the loop together, I would say. So this is the loop. And then obviously if we um, if we connect those points up again, um, we end up with a curve. So maybe we just do that. So get this all together. This will be our Bezier curve generator, um, which works if you move the points around. So this, due to it being a loop and Grasshopper is not really that comfortable with those, like with data that flows back and runs again, kind of yeah, has to recalculate stuff. So this is a little bit janky, but I mean, it basically does exactly what it should do. So um, just ignore that, that it's a little jumpy. Mm. So now let's say we just copy this, um, disconnect it. Or actually, let's copy that one too. Um, and make all this stuff here invisible. Preview off. Clear the values here and get some more points. Let's just go nuts and do, I don't know, just a lot of points. And another one here. Um, let's grab them all, plug them in here. Um, multiple points, internalize, and then I guess we can delete those. And now if you plug those points in here, yeah, there you go. We gonna get a busier curve. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So this is basically how a simple busier curve is calculated under the hood.
Um, probably not quite. Um, there's probably some fancy ma matrix calculation. Oh, m but maybe not. Maybe maybe it's just inter like linear interpolations after linear interpolations. Um, I think this should be efficient enough um, if you if you code this in in something other than grasshopper. Um, okay, so now that we have a curve, um, we kind of want to evaluate the curve. So we want to figure out certain parameters. And when you talk about calculus, which this kind of is, I mean, you can describe this, I think, in a calculus kind of way, whatever that means. Um, but there is something called derivatives. So there's first and second derivative, or third and fourth. But um, in, in terms of a Bezier curve, the first derivative would be um, basically the tangent direction. And the second derivative would be curvature, which, um, if you remember, are the two things that are important when you align things. You want to align the first point, curvature. Let's just do this again. Um, you let's say we have another curve here. And if we align this curvature, that means this point here is aligned tangent, so it has something to do with the direction. And if I, if I move this curve around, it always it's always tangent. It's running tangent out of this of this other curve. And curvature basically means how round the curve is. So we kind of wanna wanna evaluate tangent and curvature where those two curves meet to dictate where those two points are when um, next time we're not gonna do this curve today but next time when um, or in part two let's say um, when we when we actually construct this curve here um, we will only use this tangent and um, curvature to evaluate because the way to construct this curve is like it, it, there, there is a simpler way. We don't actually need to evaluate this this point in a way w I want to do it now. Um, but in any case, it's still useful to understand those concepts, and I think pretty pretty interesting how simple it actually is. So um, let's. Which I think I think we 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 just put this one aside. This is a little bit too complicated. I just wanted to have this as a proof of concept that it actually works. So let's um, turn the preview off and um, just look at this one at this curve. So now that we actually have this, we can also instead of draw out the curve. We can actually, by just using one value, um, run a point along the curve. So the yellow point now follows our cubic busy curve. And that means we can evaluate it. So how would we evaluate um, the tangent direction? So, um, and I think this is also kind of the way it works in calculus. You basically just generate a second point. Um, we're gonna be doing this by, let's just plus this um, and get a, another slider. So, and then um, we will get just two numbers, basically. Um, so one is the original number and one is the original number plus another number. So let's just, yeah, I think we should graph them and then plug them in. And then we have two curves, uh, two points here. And oh yeah, it's drawing the curve in between. Um, we actually don't need that curve. But actually, we, no, let, let's, let's keep it there. Um, because now those two line, those two points, you can connect with a line, and the closer you get those two points, the the um, the closer this this the direction of this of this line here is going to be tangent to that curve. So, okay, let's get rid of this. So, um, 
And I think this is also what, what would happen in calculus. You just reduce the gap between those two points um, to as small as possible. So let's just ramp this up all the way to like a lot of zeros. And um, we don't want to go to zero, but just to point zero 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 whatever one. So now we slide this all the way back. So this will look like those two points are on top of each other. But if you start zooming in um, at some point, oh yeah, and here you see th this is not 100% matching up because the because of the interpolation. But if we make this smoother, the curve gets closer and closer. And this is basically spot on. Um, it's pretty nice. So let's just keep it there. Let's just keep it on a hundred steps. Who cares? Um, Okay, but now now we should have two points, even so it just looks like one point, but yeah, we have two points and we can flatten those and between those two points we can now build a vector. Um, a vector between two points. Um, I guess we... We want to pick those two points, I guess. And then we plug them into this vector here. Um, and then we don't see anything because we want to draw the vector too. Um, so we go to display vector. Um, and here we plug in the vector. Here we plug in the starting point. And. Um, what is it? Ah, okay, yes. This is. A very small vector. Here we should actually click the boolean to true, so that means it makes a unit vector out of it. Ah, and then you saw there's some something happened here, but um, a unit vector just means oh yeah, here you see now we have this yellow little vector. Unit vector means this vector is one unit long, so that's why unit vector. Um, and then here I think we can change the color. Let's um, give this I don't know. Yeah, let's keep it white, why not? And then here, let's see. Mm, I guess we can also just multiply this and then scale the vector up. Um, let's say x times 10. Yes, here we go. Perfect, so now we have a 10 times bigger vector, so now we can actually see it. And then here width we can actually also change this to, I don't know, 5. So now we have a nice big vector that points in the tangent direction um, wherever this point sits. So if we move this point around, let's just bring this back here. If we move this point around, oh no, sorry, here we are. If we move this point around, this point will always point, or this vector will always point into the tangent direction. Um, so that way we evaluate the tangent direction of the curve. And then uh, we're almost done. I uh, just want to show you one more thing, which would be um, curvature. And curvature is usually, or one way of um, visualizing curvature is by putting a radius here that has the size of the of or the same the same curvature as the as the curve so um the principle is pretty much the same so we will let's just copy everything up to here so if we so now for, for curvature, what we need, instead of two points, we need three points. Um, let's hide this all. So that means we can just also use and subtract here and I guess, oh no, um, let's, mm, let's use subtract. So from the first number, we subtract a titsy tiny, eeny weeny amount. Um, and now we should end up with, uh, no, we have to plug this in first. Uh, so now we have our original point here. We have one that's a little bit further back and one that's a little bit further forward. Um, if we bring them apart from each other, you can see they are kind of like on, um, on the curve, but 
in a different position. So that's great. Now we can just connect a three point, three point, three point radius through it. Where is it? Um, oh yeah, here we go. So point A, point B, point C. Um, and then we have to bring them as close together as humanly possible. See if we make them too far apart, they yeah, don't really describe the curvature, but when we bring them close together, they do. So now we have this curvature here, and we can actually um, check the radius, um, which will then tell us what the radius is of that curve, exactly where this point here is. Um, let's make this, first of all, change the font, make this a bit bigger, and get rid of this stuff that we don't need. Some center. So now we actually even have a numerical value that describes how big the radius here is. Oops. So um, if we slide this point around, the radius changes and actually let's make this a little bit more interesting curve um, clean this up a little bit around yeah so now if we move the spots here so now we have more of an S shape and if we run this point around then you can actually see it flip to the other side um, yeah so I think that will be it for today um, I think I went on a little bit longer than I, I wanted actually but um, yeah Oh, we have one person watching, um, which is more than I expected. <laughs> but in any case, um, I think I end it here. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, one person. And um, maybe till next time when I will explain how curvature alignment works. Um, yeah, okay, bye.